Welcome everyone and thank you for coming along to today's webinar on the topic of my health record on, and on how to take control of your health information. Um, today's webinar features speakers from the Digital Health Agency, uh, Vandana Chandani and Tuna Cantor, uh, here to inform consumers about how to use my health record uh, in a, a conscious and um, controlling way, as well as our consumer representative, Linda Beaver. Before we begin today, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands wherever you may be watching this from, uh, in my case, the Ngunnawal people, and I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, I welcome all community leaders to this webinar. So my name is Daniel Weber. I'm the Digital Health Policy Officer here at CHF. You may have seen me at the last webinar and you'll see me at some in the future. So a few housekeeping reminders. This webinar is being recorded and will be available on the CHF website with some additional resources. And uh, there's a live Q&A function, which we will be moderating and responding to the questions throughout the webinar today. If we don't respond to all of them, we will be making a note of these and develop a response to put on our website with the release of the recording of the webinar. So please remember to keep all comments and questions respectful uh, and being mindful of everyone here. So if you'd uh, like to become a member of CHF, we will be placing these details uh, on at the end so you can have a look at following the webinar and we would love any feedback you may have. So I will be uh, handing over to the panel members to introduce themselves. Would you like to start Vandana? Thanks Daniel and um, good afternoon everyone. It's great to be here. Um, my name is Vandana and I am um, a pharmacist by background. Um, I am one of the managers within the education team. Um, and what I'll do this afternoon is sort of go through um, the basic features of my health record and how you can make the most of it. I'll hand over to Tunde and Jeff just to do a quick intro before we move on. Hi everyone, I'm Tunde. I'm a digital health educator here at the agency and I'll be answering um, many of your questions in the chat. So if you have any questions during the session, either for Vandana or for Linda, please um, just place them in the chat and I will endeavour to answer them or to direct them to those guys. Thank you. Hi, my name's Jeff Briggs. I'm also a, a manager in the education team and just wanted to say thank you for everybody participating. It looks like we're getting fantastic numbers today, so thank you. Hi, I'm Linda Beaver and I am here as a representative of Health Consumers and will be able to provide a, a voice on behalf of Health Consumers and hopefully be able to clarify any issues, but also to enable us to have a representation in this forum, outlining any of the issues or concerns we may have and all the positives we're experiencing. Thanks, Linda. Um, look, before we kick off, I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands we're meeting on. Uh, for me, it's the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. Um, and so I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge and extend that respect to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who may be joining us today. So in terms of um, what we will be covering this afternoon, there is a fair bit to go through. So I'll try my best and cover some of the key aspects and make sure we've got some time at the end of the session for um, Q&A. So um, I'll, I'll step through uh, what is my health record? How can consumers make the most um, out of it? So the benefits for, for consumers, um, the information that's contained within my health record, but more importantly, um, I'll sort of step through um, how consumers can engage with my health record. So how you can set up access. Um, there are a number of uh, privacy controls. So I'll go through some of that and um, also share some resources with, with everyone. So look, um, this is just a, a, a link for future reference. We've got comprehensive um, information available on our web on our website. There are a range of um, online learning modules which you can complete in your own time. Um, and I'm again, you know, we'd be sharing these slides with you. So all of this material is um, for your future reference. 
So let's get started. What is my health record? And as some of you may be aware, it essentially is an online summary of an individual's um, key health information. So it's not intended to be a comprehensive um, record um, that records every interaction uh, with the healthcare provider. So it's about making sure we've got key and relevant information to an individual's, and that's relevant to an individual's um, healthcare. So all of that information, um, it's important to have that in your, in your My Health record. Um, it is personally controlled, which means um, you as the owner of the My Health record can manage what information is um, available in the My Health record. So um, shortly, I will step through some of the privacy um, controls and how you can um, sort of manage access, how you can see who has viewed or uploaded information to a My Health record. Um, it is part of a national system, which means it is available um, throughout Australia. Um, in terms of uptake, we've got majority of um, hospitals, general practices, pharmacies, and we are seeing more and more healthcare providers get on board. So um, uh, what that means is where consumers are traveling from one state to another, and if they were, um, if they were to see a GP, um, in that sort of uh, when they're traveling uh, or sort of visit a hospital, provided that hospital and the general practice was connected, they would be able to see critical information of that um, uh, for that individual. So that might be any medicines they may be taking or any allergies or their uh, past medical history. Like you would expect with other um, systems, the My Health record is accessible at all times and it is protected. So they, we've got um, a cybersecurity center who sort of operate 24-7 um, and they'd be looking at um, any sort of suspicious um, access and, and are sort of constantly following up on that. Um, but just bear in mind, we really haven't had any issues to date. And we also have the My Health record legislation, which clearly articulates that all of the information in my health record is for the provision of healthcare. Um, so we still get our questions from consumers about um, whether or not they have a my health record. So just to clarify, um, in February 19, um, we moved sort of, um, there was a period before February 19 where um, the, the agency announced the opt-out period, which means that everybody had an opportunity to think about whether or not they want to have a my health record. And at the end of that opt-out period, which is in February 19, um, everyone who um, had a My Health record um, were, were given. So a, a record was created for those individuals. So unless they opted out, there is a My Health record created for those individuals who have a Medicare card. But again, just to clarify, it is really up to the individual. So um, if someone was, um, um, wasn't aware and if they wanted to cancel their registration, they can do that at any any time and once you cancel so once you cancel your my health record that will be permanently deleted and over the years what we are observing is more and more individuals who opted out or who canceled their my health record they have decided to opt back in so um, essentially if those who have opted out can register at any time and those who wish to not have a my health record can cancel at any time um, some of you may have uh, noticed that uh, when sort of registering for a Medicare form, which would be applicable to those arriving in Australia, there is an option to select to have a Medicare card. Um, and there is options for those who do not have a Medicare card or a DVA card, they are still able to register for a My Health record. And of course, all of this information and how they can get one is available on our website. So let's look at some of the benefits um, of the My Health record. Um, so as a consumer, what a My Health record means is they don't have to remember their medical history and carry loads of information with them. Um, so whether they are traveling interstate or um, 
or let's just say, you know, somebody's looking after their loved ones, um, they don't have to rely on all of that information in paper. And, um, and you know, as a personal sort of um, experience that I've had, um, my parents, of course, don't carry that information. And for me, it's reassuring that they have a My Health record, which means that if in case um, they've got to go into hospital and I'm not around, um, and in situations like that, I think um, it's very challenging for individuals to, to remember or have that have that medical history at their fingertips. So be it remembering their diagnosis or all of the medicines or allergies and their doctors they may have seen over the years, all of that information um, would be available in the My Health record. So really it is the My Health record is connecting dots between providers, making sure that an individual does not have to, once again, um, uh, remember all of that information or keep repeating because that's what we hear from consumers that when they see one GP they um, and they might see another GP um, or, or sort of um, they might go into a hospital where the hospital has very little information about that particular individual they have to keep repeating the same information so my health record does that job for them um, what it also means is that um, it, it helps avoid unnecessary tests and scans. So there is a lot of pathology information and scans that are uploaded by providers um, that are connected to my health record. And I'll sort of show you how you can access that. It absolutely improves the quality of care, which means healthcare providers, um, when they have access to the My Health record, they'd be asking the right questions um, when the patient is sitting in front of them. So rather than um, rather than sort of rather than spending time on chasing information, it would be about asking whether or not that information is accurate and up to date. And as a pharmacist, I can tell you, I'd spend um, so much time. <coughs> chasing and 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 bringing hospitals and and general practices to get that information so it really is about making sure um, that we have the information at our fingertips to help um, patients um, there are options for the individual and their carers and loved ones to manage their record again I'll go through that shortly um, and it finally gives um, a really good snapshot um, or a detailed view of that particular individual over time. Um, so before we move on, um, I just wanted to share where we are at in terms of uptake. And as you can see here, um, based on statistics from October 2022, um, we've got more than um, 23.4 million My Health records uh, and about 97%. So there, so there is a, a lot of data within um, those records. So what we do see um, is medicines information, um, information uploaded by um, by general practice, discharge summaries uploaded by hospitals. Um, and of course, we are seeing more and more specialists come on board. So it is becoming a wealth of information. And really, like I said, um, what that means for providers is that um, when they log on to my health record, they can sort of see who the individual or, or sort of the different healthcare providers uh, that have been caring for that particular patient um, and manage or provide care accordingly. So it, it's really about coordinating care. Um, let's look at how can you access um, my health record. So um, again, we've got a really simple video that's that will that sort of shows how you can um, how you can set up access. But I'll go through that briefly. Um, so really, the first step would be to make sure that you have a, a MyGov account. Um, so those who do not have a MyGov account, I, I encourage you to look at my.gov.au um, and sign up for a MyGov account. Account. Um, and once you have done that, um, there are, of course, a range of services um, that you can link uh, within the MyGov. But My Health Record is just one of the service under, um, under, um, under linked services. So 
you would need to link the My Health record in MyGov, verify your identity, um, and it's a uh, it's a one step process where you'd have to provide your Medicare card details, um, your bank account, um, uh, your BSP and bank account number, and a couple other details just to verify your identity. And remember, all of this information is not shared with any other um, government department. And once you have verified your identity. Um, you'd be able to set up your My Health record. Um, so here we go. Um, that just shows what um, an individual would see once they have set up access to My Health um, to My Health record. So once you log into um, MyGov, so once you've sort of completed those four steps, uh, when you log into MyGov, um, there will be an option to click on My Health record, um, and then you would select on your profile. So in this case, it's um, we've got a um, a sample patient here, which is Helen Flynn. You'd click on that, and then it would take you to um, sort of the welcome section or the, the home page within your My Health record. Um, that's what the home page um, looks like once you log into your My Health record. And as you can see here, um, the purpose of this page is to really show consumers um, alerts any reminders. So in this case, um, there will be alert, there will be reminders if there, if the emergency contact details are not up to date, um, any notification preferences. Um, under alerts, there might be if there um, was a COVID-19 vaccination that was due. Um, same, likewise, under notifications, you'd see sort of a range of notifications relevant at the time. Um, proof of vaccination. Um, this was something that um, we introduced uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, where consumers would easily be able to then access the immunization history statement um, and the COVID-19 digital certificate. So as you can see, um, you'd have sort of a really good snapshot of, um, uh, of what information might be included. And then at the top here, as you sort of, um, we, we've got uh, options or, or sort of menu items that the consumers can then explore. So I will go through um, each one of these one by one and just show you what information might be included um, in these sections. So here's an example of the COVID-19 vaccination dashboard, which really it draws information from the Australian Immunization Register and other documents within the My Health record. And the purpose of this is to um, just sort of highlight um, when those vaccinations may have been administered, as you can see in this screen. Um, and what you can't see on this page is um, right at the bottom of that page, um, consumers would also be able to see if there was um, a COVID-19 test done and they'd be, e they'd be able to access the results of that particular test uh, from the COVID-19 dashboard page. So we've tried to make sure um, it is sort of um, really easy to follow, um, and and you know from time to time we've uh, we've had sort of the need to uh, download the COVID nineteen digital certificate um, and sometimes the immunization history statement. So all of that information can be downloaded from this particular page. Let's look at the documents, which includes um, a, a range of documents uploaded by um, providers. So, for instance, you can see the clinical records of the medicines information. Um, there are there is information uploaded by general practice, hospitals, pharmacies, uh, pathology and diagnostic imaging providers. Um, so again, consumers will have access to that information. Um, I will sort of go through the nuances and, and um, uh, nuances around the pathology reports and what tests would be available when and uh, when you can see that information. So under medicines information, again, um, my experience um, is that you sort of see uh, that wealth of information around, um, you know, what those medicines are, um, 
who has uploaded that information to my health record, whether that's come from pharmacies. So I'd really encourage you those, um, uh, I encourage you to sort of log into my, your my health record and sort of start to have a play and look at um, the information that's already uploaded. Um, immunization, similar to the COVID-19 dashboard, draws information from the Australian Immunization Register, um, and it would you'd have the ability to download your um, uh, immunization history, Medicare overview. Um, look, this is where we get a lot of questions from consumers because sometimes they can't see some information. So um, I'll, I'll go through the um, the settings page where. You'd, you'd sort of need to make sure um, that you've answered yes to a certain questions to make sure all of the information filters through to my health record. Advanced care planning, um, again, this is where, you know, consumers are really, uh, we, we sort of hear from consumers uh, about this and, and um, how they'd like to have that information uploaded. We are looking at hosting sessions around advanced care planning and, and sort of go through the details as to what that might look like. And finally, you as a consumer can add information to my health record. For instance, that might be a personal health summary, uh, which would be um, visible to all healthcare providers that are involved in your care, um, and some information from your childhood development as well. Um, Privacy controls, I think, is, um, is something that uh, we, again, still get a lot of questions from consumers and how you can really uh, manage access. So um, what that looks like is, as, a, as an individual, you can actually restrict access to specific documents in your My Health record. So let's say if there was um, a test result or a scan um, and you did not want that to be um, sort of visible to all healthcare providers, you can actually set what's called a limited document access code. Uh, which means if a healthcare provider registered for the My Health Record system, if they wanted to see that particular document, um, you would need to provide that particular document access code to them for, for them to sort of see that information. Likewise, we've also got the record access code, um, which means there is just a blanket restriction. Um, and in that case, um, you would need to provide that record access code before a provider can see any information. Um, there is also the option where if in case, um, uh, if there was an emergency where, uh, uh, where um, someone walked into a hospital, they were unconscious, um, that hospital can exercise what, what's called a break glass function. And that essentially is to override um, the access controls that I have just described. And look, you as a consumer can also go into your My Health record and set notifications. So that might be um, you can choose to receive an SMS or an email alert when a healthcare provider organization accesses your record or when a new record's uploaded um, uh, into your My Health record. And all instances are actually monitored and logged. So there is an access um, history which you can view, which will show you. Um, which organization has accessed your My Health record, for what purposes, and if they have uploaded a document. So um, here's just an example for what a privacy and access page looks like. And look, I won't go into all of the details here, but um, for instance, the My Record Access History is where you would um, go to to view uh, providers that have accessed your My Health record. And in this instance, only two people have accessed the record in the last 12 months. So let's look at the profile and settings section, which um, I think is a really important section. And I'd encourage you start with this particular section because what you'd sort of be thinking about is um, your emergency contact details. So again, in case of an emergency, um, if somebody um, was unconscious, um, the healthcare provider can look into the emergency contact details um, and of course, contact a particular uh, family member or a friend um, in that particular particular scenario. When it comes to notification settings, um, again, here, I think um, it, it is it is about, you know, thinking through what information from Medicare you want to see in your My Health record. And 
a lot of the times when consumers sort of don't understand this, uh, they might take no for a certain questions, which, which means important, in, in, important information like the immunization does not filter through into their My Health record. So very quickly, I just want to cover um, immunize, viewing immunization information and the pathology um, information in my health record. So uh, like I've said before, you can obviously get proof of your vaccinations from my health record, and that is available under the immunization page. But please, what I'd like to reiterate is just making sure that um, you look at the, the profile and settings tab um, and make sure that all of you, you you answer yes to most of those questions, particularly um, the question related to immunization. So you can see that information um, filter through into the My Health record. Um, Briefly, viewing pathology reports. So um, uh, traditionally, we've had a, a seven day um, delay um, applied to pathology reports, uh, but some of the, there's been changes recently, which means that um, certain um, tests, for instance, your um, the diabetes, uh, blood sugar control, HbA1c, and a couple other tests will now be available um, into the My Health record as soon as they're uploaded. Um, into the My Health record. Um, and other tests, um, they, they sort of, um, they will be uploaded, but an individual cannot see that information for up to seven days. So again, you know, those important, so the COVID-19 test results, um, your uh, HbA1c, the INR, um, these results would be available as soon as they're uploaded, but other results, um, they will not be visible to to consumers for up to seven days, just to make sure that healthcare providers have that time um, to review and have a discussion with patients. Um, I am conscious of time, so I'll go through this slide and maybe pause for any questions. Um, so with regards to privacy and security, I think, um, I've mentioned this previously that we, we've got layers of security. So whether it's the, the infrastructure we have in place um, or the, the legislation, which is quite crystal clear that the information in there is only for the provision of healthcare. So what that means is um, any misuse, there are significant penalties for misuse, um, but nobody can just access my health record because they wanted to see uh, whether they whether their neighbor had was seeing a certain GP or, or on certain medicines. Um, that would be classified as misuse and there's significant penalties. Um, the access controls form part of the security. So that option for consumers to manage um, who has access to that information is a really important part um, of making sure that information is safe and secure. Um, I, I'm conscious um, that we, uh, we've gone through a fair bit, but I, I'll just pause here and see if there are any questions. Hi, Vandana. Uh, we do have a few questions. Uh, the first one is, I thought the opt-out had reverted for consumers who were required to opt in. Does this mean all consumers, especially those who previously opted out, are now automatically given a My Health record? And this question comes from Denise. Sure, thank you for that question, Denise. So look, essentially um, those consumers who opted out um, will not have a My Health record. So um, during the opt-out opt period, we had a very small number of consumers um, who opted out. So no, they will not have a My Health record. Uh, but what we are seeing is those consumers who opted out are opting back in. So it's really their choice. Um, so if a consumer, um, yeah, if they made that choice not to have a My Health record, then a record will not be created or does not exist for them. Thank you. And we have another question here. Can healthcare providers charge extra for writing a health summary for My Health record? Look, that's a really good question. And I, um, um, I'm not really across um, uh, the, the different sort of, you know, the, 
the model and how healthcare providers um, bill. Um, my understanding is though that there are certain um, uh, Medicare benefit schedule items or MBS items that healthcare providers can avail um, when developing and uploading a shared health summary. But for, just to clarify, a shared health summary is essentially just a summary of an individual's health information. Um, and what they are doing is auto-populating the shared health summary um, from, from sort of, you know, they're, they're not writing everything manually. They can just uh, populate the template and review that information. The most important bit, I think, is to make sure that their um, systems are all up to date um, and then um, discussing that information with the patient and uploading is really straightforward and it doesn't really take a lot of time. Thanks, Vendana. And we have another question from Evan. He's asking if um, can dentists, optometrists, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, so allied healthcare professionals, can they upload information to my health record? That's a really good question. And look, um, we are working with, um, with, with those providers or sort of those groups, I'd say, so more broadly, um, we, you know, allied healthcare providers can, can register um, for my health record. Um, there are some sort of technical um, nuances there, um, and I wouldn't want to go into a lot of detail, but what I can say is um, if an allied healthcare provider wanted to register for my health record, they absolutely can do that now. Um, currently, depending on the systems they are using, they may just be able to view the my health record and not upload any information. Um, so yes, look, and, and um, there is a strong focus on allied health. And I know that the agency um, will be working with allied health uh, care providers to make sure they can sort of engage and upload information. So watch the space there. Thanks, Fendana. Uh, we might have time for just one more question. Uh, the question comes from Fayaz. If I create a My Health Record now and select settings appropriately, will all retrospective results or information be visible in my account or will only future results or information be included? Um, yeah, look, so in terms of um, retrospective information, no, that will not be included. So let's say if a My Health record was um, created um, in January, all of the information that'll that'll sort of be there will be January onwards. So retrospective data will not be there, and that applies to the notification. Uh, notification as well. So if in case um, uh, an individual said no, I do not want. Uh, my immunization information to filter through from Medicare. Um, and then they, they changed their mind and selected yes for that. Um, it, it will only filter through from when they changed um, their response. So no, retrospective information will not be uploaded or will not be available, I should say. Okay. Thank you, Tunde. Um, thank you, everyone, for your for your contribution. I I'd now like to just I'd like to invite Linda um, and see if you have um, any questions or if you'd like to share your perspective, Linda. Thank you. Thanks very much. I'll just get the uh, get my screen on so I'm visible. might just be uh, blocked by the share screen. Vandana? Sure, let me have a look and stop. I don't think I'm sharing, Linda. Vandana, I think, yep, it's all good yep. now. Okay. All good? Okay. There we go. 
sorry, Linda, you're, you're not, oh, there we go. Yep, now. There we are. Oh, sweet. Thank you for that. Yes, sorry for that little hiccup. Technology lets us down sometimes. Uh, thank you, Vandana. I really um, enjoyed hearing more about uh, the benefits and the capacity of my health record. When I introduced myself, I did mention the fact that I would discuss a couple of the issues that I'm hearing about from a consumer perspective, but also the benefits. And I think certainly the benefits are there. And today I just want to outline uh, comments and insights I've gained from my uh, anecdotal information, we'll say, and comments from consumers. I speak to people a lot. I present to people uh, and community groups, and I get a lot of feedback. And certainly the My Health Record, I think the biggest issue I could say is we forget it's there. We're just not reminded to use it. And that's probably one of the, the drawbacks from the, the general population perspective. So too, the benefit must be recognised. And that is it does give us an opportunity to have something that can be a single source of information. The single source of information we hope will be reliable, it will be accessible uh, in an easy and understandable way, but also enable us to understand our health history and offer that information to people for whom we think it's appropriate. So those are some of the key issues, the negative, the positive. We need to be reminded that we have this opportunity to monitor and track our own health records in a very, um, well, realistic way. The drawback on the other side is that some of those records aren't uh, incredibly comprehensive. So we don't have ready access at the moment to Allied Health, for example. And I know you've just mentioned this and Evan, thank you for raising that, uh, that particular question. Because Allied Health plays such an integral role in so many of our chronic health conditions, which are prevalent in our community, that to not be able to readily have access to that information could be a negative. So I'm really pleased that this is going to be addressed uh, in the future and that we can ensure that the physiotherapy, the, the podiatry, the dietitian uh, consultations are all going to be available uh, in a more easily accessible way. Ensuring that we as the people who sit in the waiting rooms fully understand what this means to us really has to be a, a bit of a constant prompt, I think. And one of the comments I've heard repeatedly is, yeah, I think I've got a My Health record. Um, why do you only think you have? You know, we have this system where people could opt out or else it was a given that you had a My Health record. Yeah, but I don't look at it very often. And this is where I think that lack of um, reminding that lack of awareness that this can be a really valuable tool is something that we need to try and resolve. And I think that comes from two sides of the coin. One is we as consumers and, you know, the, the patient, understanding that this can be a really positive thing for us to have access to, but also the health service providers reminding us that their information can and should be linked to my health record is also something that we probably should be exploring a little bit more. Um, re recent health um, consultations I've experienced have just completely um, gone past without me even thinking about whether that information, whether those pathology tests, whether those investigations have in fact been uploaded onto my health record. And I think that little prompt however it is generated within the, the health system would be really positive because the value is undeniable. Similarly, we have situations where the cross-border thing comes to mind. Now, I know, uh, thank you, you mentioned the fact that these the My Health record is something that will give us access to our, our medical records, our GP information, our medications, hospitalizations, and so on, no matter where we are in Australia. Um, can I just get clarity on that? Because that's one of the things that I'm very mindful of uh, from a consumer perspective, because where I live, we have a lot of cross-border interaction with our healthcare, uh, New South Wales with the ACT. 
And sometimes that is not apparent in my health record documentation. So my question is, um, how is this activated? And how can we as consumers ensure that that information is going to be stored in a universal way when we do cross borders, so to speak? Mm -hmm. um, we might leave that answer, I think, Vandana, just until the end, because there's a couple of other points that have sure. uh, come out in recent discussions and also from my own experience and personal information. And that is that being able to ensure we have easy access to the information is really important. And I've, I've listened to and I've looked at the pathways and I'm just concerned that in some instances, the, um, the ease of access could be a bit challenging for some members of our community. And uh, I would love to see and hear from people that some of the things that could enhance this might be to have some um, FAQs that we can access. And uh, while a reliance on video information is really, really beneficial, it's not always easily accessible. Mm -hmm. And so to have other forms of uh, being able to convey that information out there into the public arena, I think would be really beneficial. So I'm. this is once again based on feedback that there's an enormous amount of headway being made in that level of communication through all the video links that we have available. It's a matter of, I think, circulating that. And once again, do we as consumers know about it? So the publicity, and I'll use that term, that would be really, really supportive of all of us embracing this wonderful opportunity to have this centralised uh, record keeping system is really based on us remembering it's there, you know, and knowing that it's there and being able to appreciate how valuable uh, a tool it can be for each and every one of us. We sit in the waiting rooms, we all do. Uh, we think about our health, we're often very vulnerable and uncertain and confused when we're sitting in a waiting room uh, or during our health consultation. So we might not always really consider the fact that some of that information could and should be part of our uh, My Health Record notation. So just the reminders, the prompts, the publicity, uh, the improvements that are being uh, implemented, particularly with the allied health, is going to be of huge benefit. So I really look forward to learning more and having more of this information out there because uh, from the, the consumer viewpoint, the more we understand, the more we see the benefit, I think the more interaction will be uh, observed and the more ownership we'll want to take. It all links into our person-centered care philosophy, but it's also underpinned by many of the issues of health literacy and capacity for individuals to be able to utilize this great technology. So yes, it's fantastic. The negative is I'm not sure that we are, we are aware and reminded of its use all the time. So thank you for the information you've provided. And, uh, you know, I look forward to this as being an ongoing professional and learning development for all of us to make sure that we can utilise it to its greatest capacity for our benefit, because it is our health, and it will offer us the opportunity for us to take and share some of that control. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Look, I'm more than happy to address a couple of those comments, uh, but maybe let's see if there if there's any further um, questions from the audience, um, and then I can sort of um, yeah address that and wrap up. Thanks, Fendina. Uh, we do have some comments for you, Linda. So from Amy, totally agree with you, Linda. The benefits need to be promoted. And from Denise, she agrees with you. We need to remind our clinicians and healthcare providers to add our history to the My Health record to ensure a complete and up-to-date record. Um, there's a question from Catherine. Are there any plans to link in e-prescriptions with My Health record? Look, that's a good question. So um, 
uh, there, um, I wouldn't go into the, the detail around e-prescriptions. We, um, we delivered a webinar last week around e-prescriptions, um, so that would go into um, uh, more details. But essentially, how the two are actually linked is when an electronic prescription is, um, is generated, like a paper prescription, um, a doctor would be able to upload that prescription detail into the My Health record. So that prescription information would be uploaded into the My Health record. Uh, but as of now, um, a, a provider would not be able to differentiate and say whether that was a paper or an electronic prescription, because that really should not matter. So whether it is an electronic or paper prescription um, wouldn't make any sort of wouldn't make a huge difference because the important information for the healthcare provider, um, looking at the medicines information is, is more around the type of medicine, dose, what they're using for, whether that is um, important to that individual's ongoing care. Um, yeah, whether or not that's a paper or an electronic prescription um, is sort of, you know, would not be, would not, would not be that relevant. Thanks, Fenida. And then we have Amy, who's commented on the use of an app and how an app would be helpful um, so that people have access to their information all the time. And I thought that might be um, sort of the perfect timing to let everyone know that we're launching, um, the agency is launching the My Health app uh, at the end of this month that will be available for, for consumers to access and also download and share the information in their My Health record. And this will be a free app that can be used on an Android or an iPhone. That's exactly right. So look, going back to Linda, your point about ease of access, and you'd certainly be relying on internet connection um, for that. So, um, but at least, you know, we, we've made a start. So we know what's really important is to have um, an app and for individuals, um, to sort of be able to see that information easily from that from the My Health app, which, as Tunde mentioned, would be we're looking at sort of um, uh, launching that at the end of the month. And going back to I think just allied healthcare providers and look what what can happen in the interim. Um, and I'd probably see you know as a pharmacist um, when I didn't have access, the My Health app would have been absolutely fantastic because. Um, a consumer can easily bring up the My Health app and where a provider who's caring for them did not have access, they could still open the My Health app and that would be relevant for certain health, for those allied healthcare providers and share some of that information. So we are making a headway, uh, but like you'd expect with technology, improvements come over time. Um, and, you know, what we're really open to is feedback. Again, you know, we've made a lot of improvements over the last um, 12 months and we'll continue to do so based on feedback from providers and consumers. Thanks, Fendina. Uh, we've got a question about documents that consumers or, or um that we can upload to our My Health record ourselves. So Fayaz says, what documents can be user uploaded and are there any restrictions on file formats? Um, look, the, so what a consumer can upload is um, a personal health summary, um, personal health notes um, and an advanced care plan. So a personal health summary, um, I don't think there is any restrictions there. So I've got a My Health record and in my personal health summary, um, I've added information about medicines. Um, so, but you've just got to bear in mind that the personal health summary is visible to other healthcare providers. So you you know think about what information you want in there. Um, it could be allergies. It could be that you've got um, something over the counter and that didn't agree with you, and you wanted to make a note of that particular allergy in the personal health summary. Now, personal health notes is something that you and um, uh, you know who let, let's say your family or loved ones who have access to your My Health record, they would be able to see 
the personal health notes. And that could be um, a, a description of, um, let's say, um, you know, consult with the allied healthcare provider might be the occupational therapist or the dietitian. And if there was some advice from that particular provider, you could easily just put that in your personal health notes just for you to view that information. And I know with the advanced care plan, um, there are some templates, but again, you know, there is so much work happening in that space just to make it more user friendly. So I won't comment much on that just at that stage, because I know there is a lot of work happening as to how we can streamline development and the uploading of advanced care plans. Thanks, Vandana. Um, if someone goes overseas, how can the My Health Record can be, how can the My Health Record be accessed? Oh, look, great question. So, um, I'd say the My Health app um, would be perfect. So, um, you know, when 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 the My Health app is available, you should easily be able to get into the My Health app and share some of that information. Um, even the, the so, so directly from your browser. So of course, um, the My Health app would be more would be easier, but you can still get into your My Health record through MyGov. Um, but just a couple of things that I want to make a note of here is firstly, um, you would need internet connection where you are to get into MyGov and then um, access My Health record. And secondly, it is a two-step verification when it comes to MyGov. So um, I usually just get an SMS on my phone. So you would, of course, need your phone to be um, to sort of be active to receive that to receive the SMS code to then go into it. Um, so a couple options there, but I think once the My Health app becomes available, um, I think that would be um, the easier sort of option to um, yeah to to access my health record when someone's overseas. Thank you. And the next question comes from Pamela. Are health professionals the only persons that are able to correct inaccurate information? Um, Look, there's a couple options. So yes, health professionals, um, definitely. So um, for example, if my GP uploaded um, a, a summary document um, and for whatever reason, there was, um, uh, there was the medicines information that was incorrect. So what I could do is um, definitely my, my first choice would be to go back to my doctor, have a discussion, get them to update their systems and upload the correct document onto my health record. Um, the second option would be you can go into your my health record so the consumer can go in um, and delete that particular um, document from your my health record after knowing that it includes inaccurate information. Or the third option is um, you can ring the My Health Record helpline, let them know that the information is inaccurate um, and they'd be able to help you remove that document. So those are the three options, but absolutely my, my sort of preferred option would be to go back to that particular um, healthcare provider and ask them to update um, the information. Thanks, Vandana. We've got a question about pathology. Um, who has responsibility of uploading the pathology tests? The pathologist doing the tests or the family doctor? And this question comes from Evan. Thank you, Evan. So the responsibility or who can actually upload is the pathology provider. So there are a range of pathology providers that are connected to my health record. And I, I'm, again, I don't want to go into the technical side of things and what that connection looks like, um, but it's only healthcare provider organizations that are registered for my health record. They can upload information to my health record. So um, uh, again, look, the, on our website, we've got a list of all of those pathology providers across the country that should be uploading information to my health record. Um, it's not the family doctor or the referrer. So I've got a, a referral from my doctor uh, for a blood test. 
it does not go up from the general practice. It's the, it's the pathology that will conduct the test that provider who's connected to my health record will be sending information up to my health record. The other thing to bear in mind is um, when a consumer gets a referral, um, in most cases, um, nobody will tick the box that will say, do not upload to my health record. But in certain cases, um, consumers have made that choice that they don't want a certain um, test or, or scan to go up into their my health record. So unless that box is ticked, the information by default will go up into the my health record provided um, that pathology provider so whoever you, you, you know, you're, you're sort of visiting, if they are registered, they will by default send it up to my health record. Thanks. Uh, I think that might address Maureen's question as well. Um, she's also saying that um, blood tests or pathology tests are done at PHC and sent to different labs. So sometimes there's an issue with these results being uploaded to my health record. Yeah, look, there, of course, there are pockets where um, pathology providers are not registered and still not sending information up to my health record. So um, um, yeah, that is an ongoing piece of work. We've got um, a team who, who are working directly with pathology providers to make sure we have as many um, providers connected and sending information up to my health record. And I, Thanks, can see, I can see, Linda, you've got your hand up. Yep. Yeah, I do. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt you, Chunde. Just, um, I just wanted to follow up on something that is relevant to the, the recent questions. And this is regarding specialist consultation information. Uh, it's been mentioned to me on more than one occasion that sometimes the information about a specialist visit or consultation is not visible. And the question is, should it be the specialist who is uploading the uh, record of the consultation or a summary, or would it be the response uh, from the specialist to the GP that would then be the GP uploading it? And that would then create that trail, if you like, of information about specialist involvement in healthcare. Um. Look, it, it, uh, what I'd say is it would be the specialist. So they are, um, um, if I'm sort of uh, consulting with um, an endocrinologist and um, based on my consult, there are some pertinent points that are relevant to my health care. They would be the ones um, uploading that information. So there's a specialist summary that they would be uploading to my health record. Um, and what I'd like to reiterate is it, it's not the specialist is not going to upload a comprehensive record of that consultation. So it will be a summary stating the, let's say, the diagnosis, um, the changes in medicines, perhaps, or the treatment approach and the plan. Now, that document would also be shared with the, with the referring GP. Um, now, the general practice, so let's say my family doctor, my specialist could not upload to my health record. So my GP would have access to that information. What they can choose to do is um, just make note of the fact that um, I have visited a specialist. So they cannot, they would not be uploading the letter they have received from the specialist to my health record. They can't do that. So any provider cannot scan a pathology test or a specialist letter and just send that up to my health record, but they can make a note of the fact that um, uh, their patient has seen a specialist and put some notes in a document and send it up to my health record. So that is possible. Thanks, Vendana. We've got a couple of minutes left of the presentation. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to put into the chat um, some information for everyone to be able to, and I'm just trying to work out how to do this, how to be able to post in here. I might need Daniel to help me with this. I've been answering questions, but I can't find, let me have a look. Here we go. 
So while um, while you're doing that today, um, look, can I just say thank you to everyone for your participation and questions. It's been a really um, uh, interesting session and it's a great opportunity to be here. Um, we are of course going to provide more um, more sessions like these for consumers. Um, we have planned a series of events um, and the agency team, so the education team, Tunde and I and Jeff um, and some of the others who've been working in this, we are very passionate. We, we recognize that consumers want this information and want to really engage with their My Health record. So we will be doing um, more education in the coming months. Yes, Linda, I can see you've got your hand up. Yes, I'm sorry to keep interrupting, but one of the really wonderful things I learned about recently, which I didn't know, was all uh, was the location of all the um, resources that's not essentially on the My Health Record page or website. So could we provide that information to everybody as well through the chat? Because I think that's a, an asset that... Uh, needs to be identified and utilised. So uh, lots of good information, but it's not quite where I would have gone looking for it. So I think that link would be really helpful. Yeah, no, thank you, Linda. So in we will share um, uh, the slides and in the slides, we've got link to the digital help online for everyone, the resource pack. And I agree with you, Linda. So I will share that link in the chat pane um, now. So everyone's got access thank you. to that information. Linda, if I can, it's Jeff here. I just wanted to clarify the, the query you had about cross-border yes. um, health services. Yep. Um, the statistics at the moment are that 97% of public hospitals in Australia are registered, with 95% of those um, having used for my health record. So uh, as I know, you're in southern New South Wales and I'm in the ACT, it's very pertinent. Um, so yes, there is that cross-border information flow and the my health record is of course for national system so state and territory hospitals are able to draw upon that information where required and where they have access um, and also at the moment around 99 percent of general practices are also registered now that's for practice as opposed to the practitioner so um, there may be some practitioners within a practice that are not necessarily using it but 99% of general practices are registered. And so if you came up from Southern New South Wales and happened to see a doctor in New South Wales, in the ACT, for example, then um, there's a very high degree of chance that they would be able to access your My Health record. That's fantastic. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, really pleased to get that clarified. Um, I just noticed that when you were explaining that it was um, have access to, is there an automatic process? For example, if I go to a hospital in the ACT and I end up in the emergency department, does my data or some sort of a summary or information then automatically get uploaded to it, my it, health record? Um, it, it's available. Um, and so I would encourage consumers, if they want information uploaded to their My Health record, for them to talk to their, their doctor, whether that be their general practitioner or their, you know, if they're in um, an emergency ward, um, and encourage that to occur. Right. So it's, it's okay. I just wanted to get that clarified. Thank you very yeah. much. So we, yeah. we need to action that interaction should I say? I think that goes a long way. Yes. Yeah. And, and I always, often use the analogy of a My Health Record a bit like a bank statement. Everybody that has a bank account has a bank statement. Some people will go through that you know, with a fine tooth comb every month. Others will seldomly look at it, but they know it's there for the bank, bank to use when they need. Same with the My Health Record. You know, um, the vast majority of people have a My Health Record. In fact, nearly 300,000 people that opted out originally in that opt-in period have reconnected and opted in. So the vast majority of the population do have a My Health Record. Um, there will be some people that will use it and look at it quite extensively, um, but there will be you know, a large number of people that are comfortable and confident that they've got it 
and that it's there for healthcare providers to get that extra information that they maybe didn't have access to previously to be able to make better diagnosis and, and treatment options. Thank you, Jeff. I am conscious of time. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I've, Vanina, I've placed some um, survey feedback information into the chat now. I'm sorry, I've had a bit of difficulty there, but there is um, some information there for everyone. If you wouldn't mind, please, providing some evaluation feedback at the end of the session, that would be greatly appreciated. Yep, so uh, I'm not sure if it's visible to everyone, but if you can go to uh, Slido, which is sli.do, on your uh, device, whatever that may be, and enter the code 850310, uh, then there's a short um, quiz to sort of see how you felt evaluation wise. That's sli.do and 850310. Um, I think that's where we'll uh, cut the, the Q&A section off. It is now a couple of minutes past the uh, registered ending time. But as I said earlier, we'll be uh, putting together a response to those questions that we weren't able to answer on this and we will upload it when we upload the video. So thanks again, everyone for participating. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, everyone who's been on the panel. So that's Linda, that's Vandana, that's Tunda and that's Jeff. Uh, your, you know, your commitment to sharing that information has been great. And uh, yeah, Linda, thank you for your perspective. That was really helpful. And thanks everyone who has put in a question. Um, it's, you know, the best, the best way to learn things is to ask. Um, so please uh, contact us if you want um, any more information or if you want to be involved in the discussion about it, that would be great. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll wrap that up there. Thanks everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank Have a good afternoon. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.